Hey, what's up guys? Fish Tank Mike here. Today, we're finally gonna go to the fish store and get something for the tree tank over here. Before we head out though, we really gotta brush this thing's teeth. The toothbrush, by far one of my favorite tools for cleaning algae. It does a really good job at getting stuff out of plants, like the moss here, as you just saw. For the stuff on the glass, you guys know we use flippers, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and just scrape all of this stuff right off here with the blade side. Let's see if we can get a flip here first try. There we go. And then this pad even works really well on some of this not so crazy stuck on spot algae. If you want to get one of these flippers guys, you can save 10% on Flip Aquatic. Super easy to remember. Just use my code AquaPros. Okay, we are clean. We did a little five gallon water change on here to kind of clear it up. Let's go ahead, let's go to the fish store. Let's fly back here as fast as possible and let's check out our new fish. And just like that, we're back. We got our fish, guys. Let's check them out. It is time to temperature acclimate our three literal baby puffer fish, guys. Okay? So, I mentioned it in the setup video here. We were going to do something kind of familiar. So, we got pea puffers, putting them in the old pea puffer tank. New scape, obviously, but I think these guys are going to go absolutely perfect in here. We only have three of them, okay? We'll get a closer look here in just a second. Um, I was going for six to eight of them, but they only had this many left, okay? I should have called like a week ago and had this planned out better, but I think we're just going to go for it. Like, they're going to have this whole thing. It's going to be like a mansion for them. It's going to be their palace, their giant tree apartment in the water. What am I even talking about? All right, let's let's get these guys in here. Please don't overflow. Oh, that's so close. Who does this give anxiety to <laughs> besides me? Ah, there's a drip. Oh, there's another drip. I think we're going to be okay. This is super Super sketch. At least I know that the tank is pretty level, okay? It's it's pretty much at the same point on all four corners, so that's a good sign. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn our twin star light off here and let the fish chill out because we don't want them to be super close to that very, very bright light. We'll check back here in about 20 minutes and we'll get them in the tank. Back at the tank, guys, four days later, two of our puffer fish are doing really good. They are super hard to spot in here. We'll have to get some nice macro shots for you to actually see them. They're so tiny. Unfortunately, one of them, I think, did pass away. He is currently MIA for the last few days. I, I don't know uh, where he ended up, but he was looking very, very skinny. So skinny to the point where you would assume that he had some sort of a parasite. This is not something that is uncommon to see in pea puffers. If you notice that any of yours are getting super, super skinny, um, despite the fact that they are eating, that could very well be the issue. And so what you're gonna wanna do is get yourself some fenbendazole. We have some here, it's essentially just canine dewormer, and that's gonna help to get rid of those nasty worms that are common in these fish. Our other two puffers though are looking pretty healthy. Um, they have full bellies and they've been acting completely normal. So all things I think are looking good for them. We'll just have to continue to monitor the situation and make sure they stay that way. Right here next to the tank from the couch's perspective is probably the best place to view the tank from. Not the best at looking at the scape, but you definitely do get some pretty cool sight lines on the fish.
I love how these guys methodically cruise around the tank, following each other, probably trying to figure out some kind of territory. That's what these fish do, at least when they're in a little bit of higher numbers. And I really do hope that we can get more than a few extra in here. I think it would be great, like I said before, with like six to eight of them here in this 30 gallon tank. And that way too, we're going to see a lot more swimming around activity, which is of course what we want. For now, we'll just hang out with these two guys, make sure that uh, we don't have to medicate them or anything crossing my fingers on that, but even if we do, it's not too hard of a process to go through. Pea puffers, like most other puffer fish, are gonna love to eat snails, which as you can see, we have quite a few in here of these just common ram's horn snails. There's always more than a few up here at the top. Some smaller ones are what these guys are pretty much exclusively gonna be able to eat. Some of these are just too big for them because they're just so small, but as they get a little bit older, all of these snails will eventually meet their match. Some of these baby snails here on the glass are gonna be the perfect source of food for them. If you don't have snails in your tank or you know they run out of snails to eat, then just go back to the uh, old faithful blood worms. I have some frozen blood worms over here in my freezer. Unfortunately, these are the jumbo ones and they're just too big for these fish. Down here you might notice some of these gray worm looking things. Those are old blood worms that we need to remove from the tank when we do a water change here in just a second. Um, some of the blood worms are, you know, twice the size of, or twice the length of these puffers bodies and they just can't fit them in their mouth. So we'll have to get some smaller ones and that way we'll have some extra food. You might be wondering what else you can feed these fish. Um, any other kind of live worm is gonna work, but these guys just are not gonna touch flake and I think I got mine in my old house to eat pellets like one time, but it was like, you know, nip it a pellet, kind of eat it, spit it out. They're really not interested in much else. Pea puffers are also really great if you're interested in getting a puffer fish in general because you don't typically have to worry about making sure their teeth stay filed down like you do with other types of puffers like Amazon puffers and other common ones that you might have access to. When these guys do end up eating snails, they basically just suck them out. They don't really crunch on the shell because the snails are so big and their mouths are so small. From what I've observed and what I know other people have observed is that just biting down on still kind of half of a frozen blood worm is enough to keep these guys' teeth in perfect shape. Another reason why I think pea puffers are just a really good addition for somebody who's looking to take that first step with puffer fish. And you know, I've never had any other puffer fish besides pea puffers, so you know they're good, you know they're easy to keep if I can do it. I also wanna say guys, if you're interested in getting some pea puffers and your local fish store has a hard time getting them in or maybe you haven't seen them available there before, um, ask first, but if they're not gonna be coming in and you still wanna get some of these, Flip Aquatics also sells these online they're a really good source for them and I support Rob 100% so there will be a link for where you can get these guys in the description and of course that coupon code aquapros works and will get you 10% off if you want to get some but again like I say most of the time support your local fish store first and use online sources for buying fish is kind of like the last step or if you can only get a specific thing online go to that local fish store first. So I think I've covered most of what I wanted to talk about regarding pea puffer care. I mean, you know, water parameters, as long as nothing's too crazy, you're gonna be fine. I think the only other thing I wanna mention is tank mates, I think. And unfortunately, pea puffers are just not good community fish. Typically, when you see people having them, they're always by themselves, and that's because they're super territorial and they're just really mean, unfortunately. They're not like these guppies that are super uh, fun and interested and not gonna try and kill everything. So guppies, no, we're not gonna be putting them into the tank over there, but I think we are gonna try some Amano shrimp that are hiding down here. And I know that's still kind of risky because Adult pea puffers would totally tear up in a mono shrimp, but these guys are so small, and I think they're gonna stay small for a little while longer. I think we might be okay with putting a few amanos in there, and they are gonna be able to help the amanos with some of this string algae that is kinda not staying away from the moss in here.
Okay, well, I was wrong, so that dude will have to we'll have to get him out here later today. He went and hid in the tree. I couldn't get him, uh, but we won't be putting any more Amano shrimp in this tank. Those guys, I underestimated how ferocious they were. I should have known better. All right, we got him. Back in the guppy tank, buddy. I think that's gonna do it for the pea puffers, guys. I think we covered pretty much everything I could think of. Uh, let me know what you think of them down in the comments. If you have any other questions about them, also leave that down there for me. And yeah, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, all that great YouTube stuff. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.